welcome back to the channel in this video we are going to be talking about data fetching in Next.js 13. so let's check it out you can see here we're just in the docs we're just going to copy this over and head over to a terminal right here and we can just paste that in uh mpx create next app at the latest because we want that Next.js 13. it's going to ask us for the uh project name so we'll just say uh data fetching and it's going to ask us if we want TypeScript. Uh, sure. Why not? Islint, sure. Tailwind, sure. Uh, no. App Router, yep, we want that. Do you want to customize the defaults? We don't need to customize anything. And it'll take you through all of that. So we just hit enter for basically all of those questions. So you can see here, we're just working through this and that is pretty quick. So we can CD into uh, data fetching like that. And then let's open this up in VS Code real quick. All right, so this is what our basic app is looking like. We have our app router here, and that's where we're gonna do all of our work right now. This is the new uh, Next.js 13 app router. Uh, so this is instead of kind of the pages folder or something you may have seen with uh, lesser versions, but this uh, version has this. So we are gonna do all of our work just in this page.tsx. Uh, so let's open that up. We don't need anything else right there. Let's uh, clean some of this up so we don't need any of this. So we got rid of everything in there and then let's just uh, add, I guess, an H1 and we'll just say test like this, just so we have something to test. And let's open up a terminal here. So we can say uh, npm run dev like that. And I'll start up our server and we can just click into this here. All right, so you can see here we are uh, running right there. We can bump this up just so we can see that. You can see here we're running just fine, so that is good. And we can go back to here and we can close uh, this out for now. All right, so let's talk a little bit about data fetching in Next.js. So with this new update right now, all of these uh, components are going to be server components out of the box. So anywhere where there's a server component, we can basically fetch our data, which is a pretty cool new update. So unless we explicitly say client at the top of this file right now, all our components will be uh, server rendered. They're going to be server components, which means that we can fetch data with uh, within these. So in the past, you can only fetch data from the pages directory, but now you can fetch within any server component. So in the past, you'd have to be in the pages directory and then you'd have to do something like this. So you'd have to do something where you're calling get server side props. Uh, you're going to get the response, like get the data. Uh, and then you'd have to pass these props into the component you are using. So now this nice update we got here with Next.js 13, we don't have to do any of this uh, ugliness right here. So in order to actually fetch data, now we can just come into our component right here and we'll just go like this and say const response. And that's gonna be equal to uh, await. Now we're gonna have to come up and make this a sync if we wanna use await here. So we'll say sync, just like that. And then we're just gonna use the fetch API right here like this. And then we can put in our call to our API right here. And this right here is just a kind of fake API call from a uh, JSON placeholder uh, website that I've used in the past. So once we have uh, that response right now, we're gonna go const data like this, and that's gonna equal await, and we'll say uh, response dot uh, JSON. And that is going to give us the data from uh, these posts here. Now that is basically these two lines are all we need to do to fetch data directly into our server component, just like that. So that's pretty nice. So let's get rid of this and actually display some of this data here. So I'm gonna come in and we're gonna map over this. So this now should uh, be displayed onto our screen. So let's check that out. All right, so here's the data. I believe this is the title and this is the body for each thing, potentially. It's kind of ugly, but basically that is fetching the data just fine. So this is all good and uh, nice, but there are a couple other ways we could potentially handle this. So let's check that out. We could say we want to fetch this data in a separate function. That's just fine. So we can say uh, 
async function just like this and we'll just call it uh, fetch data and then we can just move this stuff up into uh, here let's just copy this up and add it we'll just uh, get rid of this for now and then if we wanted to actually call that we could say const data and that's going to be equal to uh, fetch data and again we got to return something out of here so we'll say return data just like that and we got to add the await right here and then that should have the same results so check that out and you see we got the same results right there so that is another way that you can fetch your data by moving that out there uh, i kind of like just keeping it in here but it is up to you all right, now the final thing that's pretty nice with uh, this way of fetching the data is next gives us a little bit of uh, control over here. So if we come in here, we can add a, a few different things in order to control the cache and whatnot. So in order to uh, control the cache, there's a few different options. Let's say cache like this, and we can change this. We can say uh, no store, which is an option right here. So this is if you don't want to uh, use the cache at all. So this option will fetch every single request made. It'll fetch new data if we add new store like that. So that's one option. Uh, now the opposite side of that, if you want to uh, force the cache to be used every single time, you can say force cache like this. That's another option right there. So this will be good if you know this is gonna be like some static content or something like that. Now we can get even more granular than this. So let's say we came in and we wanted to uh, revalidate every, I don't know, say 10 seconds or something. We can come in and we can say next like this and open up an object here and we can say revalidate just like this. And now you can choose kind of a second count. So say you wanted to revalidate the cache every 10 seconds or something, you could come in and uh, do something like this. And this will revalidate every 10 seconds. And of course, this is uh, gonna be anything you want. So you could say every 200 seconds, whatever, whatever you like for your uh, application. So this is a nice little feature to uh, give you a little bit of control over uh, this. And I think overall, uh, fetching data in this way is a big, big uh, upgrade from the previous uh, Next versions. So that is uh, basically caching in Next. If you liked the video, give it a like or a subscribe. It would be much appreciated. And until the next one, thanks for watching.